That's you cute. <laughs> so we are gathered here today to celebrate Edward and Marissa's marriage. On behalf of Marissa and Edward, they are thankful that you can make it today. In the book of Ruth, we see a love from a marriage as an example of how we should be with one another. In Ruth chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. If you can't hear me back there, let me know. Okay? It says, But Ruth replied, Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you will stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. You see, since God created the world, He has loved us. Since time Eve was created for Adam as a present to God, God gave Marissa to Edward. With Ruth going with her mother-in-law after the death of their husbands, proved to be a blessing to her mother-in-law. Because Naomi told her daughters, whether well, their husbands died, to go back to their own families. And Ruth said, no, I'm going with you because you are my family. So not only today we're joining Marissa and Ed together, we're joining two families to become one. So, but that said, who gives this bride away? I mean. Let me pray for you guys and we'll give it to God. Guys, I want to thank you for Edward and Marissa. I was praying to be with them. Help them just to trust in you no matter what, and continue, Lord God, just guiding and directing their every move. Help them to grow closer to you and closer to each other. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, and as much as you have expressed a desire to be united in marriage, I want to ask you to take a vow. Now, a vow is not made only in the presence of your family, but it's also in the presence of God. And I believe he is here today as an unseen guest. The Bible makes it very clear that God is a witness to the wedding vow. He hears the vows that you make and intends that they be kept so as you both still have so long to live. Edward, I want to ask you first. Do you, Edward, take Marissa to be a lawfully wedded wife? See, it's lawfully, not awfully. <laughs> <laughs> lawfully wedded wife. Do you promise before God and these witnesses to love her, to comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keeping her only to yourself for as long as you both shall live? Do you promise you? I do. <laughs> he was jumping the gun. <laughs> now, Marissa, you gotta really think about this. To you, Marissa, take Edward to be your awfully, I mean, awfully <laughs> wedded husband. Do you promise for God and these witnesses to love him, comfort him, honor him, and keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, and keep him only to you, so as long as you both shall live? Even when he's whining when he's sick. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So Edward, what do you give as a token of your love to Marissa? Come on, bro. Marissa. Billy. First and last. Billy. Let me see this right here. You notice from the earlier times, since human time was very, very young, rings have was a symbolization of great seals. Now people that wore rings used to exchange each other's rings as a symbol of friendship. But now, it becomes a little bit more. It symbolizes a man's promise to a woman and a woman's promise to a man. As you will know, the ring is a complete circle, right? No beginning and end. Just like I promised your love for Marissa, right? Okay, would you put that on her ring finger and repeat after me? With this ring,
Brother God, I just want to thank you for this vow of commitment to these two. I just want to pray right now that you can continue blessing their marriage with many more years and many more years. And allow them just to seek your word. I pray this in the name of you. Now by the power of destiny, by the state of Texas, of the gospel minister, I now pronounce his husband a wife. Wish God so join, but not man separate. Then I'll kiss the ground. Look away, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, let me bring the first thing you see, guys, to Mr. and Mrs. Edward Dansby.